Okay, Deeksha Tiwari will moderate this session, so I'm the compare. I'll say a few words about Deeksha first, since she's obviously the star on the stage. Yeah. Deeksha you started her career with New Indian Express, now is a freelance, freelance journalist, journalist anchor, RJ, and a television, person. television star. No, not a star. <laughs> and soon maybe to be a movie star, depending on how this conversation goes. How the session goes. goes. <laughs> Okay, but Imtiaz, I'm not going to talk about his films because everybody already knows everything about them and what they don't know, they're going to hear today. What I will say is just two things. One is that uh, one of the other persons from the film community who will be speaking tomorrow told me, oh, Imtiaz, he's coming. He's going to be self-effacingly brilliant because that's how he is. So I think that's an amazing compliment from uh, somebody else in that extremely competitive field. And the second thing is, we've all heard about his, we've all seen his millions, Brilliant. yeah, and uh, his storytelling skills and things. But what most of us don't know is he's also an extremely decent human being, because we've been trying to get him to this festival now for four years. This is the fourth year, and. We invite about, I don't know, hundreds of people, and most of the people just reject us and do, either don't bother to say they're not coming or they just say, you know, they give some rude explanation. But this is the first star who actually called back on the day of the event and said, no, had told me that he might not be able to make it, and remembered two months later on the day of the event and actually called back to say, thank you so much, and I remember, but I'm sorry, I just can't make it because of, and he actually explained why which I thought made him really a rare individual and I think deserving of a huge round of applause. And so now after all these gaga words, hopefully she will be not so rara and instead will make <laughs> I'll, I'll try my masala of him. <laughs> and so over to Deeksha. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot to everybody for being here. Um, very bright faces. Can you guys all hear properly? Okay. Um, so my claim to fame is that I didn't come last year. <laughs> and I said that I'm not coming. <laughs> so that's a very um, remarkably yeah. honorable thing to do in exactly. this, this time. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, oh, oh, well, uh, but, but then, you know, before... There's no uh, mention of the fact that I'm here this year. <laughs> There's only mention that last year I wasn't there and I said that I won't be there. Wow. <laughs> okay, no, I'm just pulling your leg. She's, uh, Shampa is my friend's sister. So I'm meeting her for the first time, but I already feel that I'm, you know, I have the liberty to pull her leg. So right. great to be here and great to be talking to you, ma'am. Yeah, so uh, ready? All set? All set. Okay. All set. So, uh, you know, we, we, we have this little, uh, you know, ritual that we uh, follow at OLF, uh, particularly when it uh, comes to sessions with eminent film personalities like you. So it's, it's a very small thing, you know, it'll just take a minute before we start the session. So you basically what you have to do is I say and you just repeat. All right? Just, just about one line. All right? So you have to say, hi, I, Intiaz Ali. Say, please, repeat. Hi, I, Intiaz Ali. Request all the people out here. Request all the people out here. Including uh, the very good looking women, the girls, the ladies. L including all the women, regardless of their look. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So then you have to say, not to feel. Not to feel. Too jealous of this lady sitting with me and wish bad for her because she's the one who's interacting with me because I will also give you a chance to interact with me. This is to ensure my safety out here. That I'm very happy to be here in the midst of all of you. And I'm feeling very lucky sitting next to this lovely lady over here. I know that all of you must be very jealous of me, that I'm here, but I can't help it. Today is my lucky day. In fact, in fact, I was just about to say that uh, the editorial director of the New Indian Express, Mr. Prabhu Chawla, has just left for some work. But you know, in the, today you, of course, missed the session, uh, one with the chief minister, where he asked him that, you know, do you think Ache Din Aa Gaye Hai? I don't know about the state, but Mere To Aa Gaye Hai Aaj. So, anyways, so uh, we will get to what we are here for. 
the power of uh, stories. Uh, so, you know, Indias, you are considered a master storyteller in, in Bollywood. So why hasn't it ever thought of you that you could also become a celebrated author? Why didn't you ever think about writing your stories for books since it's a literary festival, you're here. So, you know, why not books? I started off uh, having the having ambitions of being a writer. Okay. And uh, I won't say that that ambition has really gone out of the window. Um, uh, so there's still if plans. I'm, yeah, if I'm good enough, if uh, my vocabulary becomes any stronger than it is already, okay. then I will. But it's true that when I was uh, studying in school and uh, even later in college, I thought that I'd become an author of books. And perhaps because it, uh, I, I'd heard that it's not a very rewarding career. Okay. I thought so you that decided to go uh, the film way. No, I thought I'd become a journalist. Okay. Uh, which I uh, hear is a very rewarding career. <laughs> Either, which isn't at all, in fact. <laughs> okay, right. sorry. Um, a lot of journalists here can understand. Yeah, so it's, it's something that I'm very fascinated by. Okay. Uh, writing. Um, but then I realized as I went along that I'm more suited to writing for, um, um, you know, the audiovisual medium. Media. I'm, it's not, I'm, I'm more interested in direction and writing what I have to do uh, uh, to be able to direct something. Okay. So that was more my scene. The tamasha was more my scene, or just like a stage performance was more like my okay. scene. But it's still there in your, you know, it's still there in your mind. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> you you want me to do that? You know, read that out to you. Yeah. I will do that later. <laughs> okay. So after the session. I I hope to be able to write a book at some point of time. But uh, nowadays, for the last twenty years, what's happening is that. Uh, whatever I think of writing is something which is audiovisual. Okay. So let's let's see if that changes. But you know, in you know, with this context, you know, I would like to ask you: there are a lot of books that you see. You know, they are getting into. Not not all great books turn into good films, and you know, vice versa. There are books which you like reading, but when you watch in films, you don't like them. And then you know, uh, vice versa. There are books which you do not like to read. Maybe you've not enjoyed reading it, but when you've seen an adaptation. Uh, in the audio-visual uh, medium, you've enjoyed it. So what is it that works here and what is it that does not? Um, you know, I, I'll say that books have a wider range. Okay. Because it's, the, um, it's a very obviously articulate medium. Um, you write the fact that uh, Ram felt very sad because of so-and-so reason and so there is there is greater ease in mm -hmm. communication to, if you if you write a book. Um, there are various ways of writing it, of course. Um, films are need not be and should not be so specific. Uh, they should not be so direct, mm -hmm. so that you rely upon various other aspects like performance, like uh, um, cinematography, etc., to bring about the same effect. Okay. But hopefully when that effect comes through, it would be more powerful because it involves many other things, right. not only the, the, the spoken word. Okay. So I feel that there is, um, there is specific and unique power in either of the media. And, uh, um, and there are some stories that lend themselves to one or the other mm -hmm. more. Um, if I ever write a book, it would be a book that should not be and should not be converted into a movie. Because that will be my unique flavor that I'll get by writing that book. Something which I cannot achieve in cinema. Otherwise, I'll just keep writing for cinema. But then don't you think when you're saying that, you know, if, I mean, this is your opinion that if you do a book, you know, you would not ideally want it to be. Uh, but then there are people, you know, who uh, you're not, you know, who are more into cinema. And you know, they, they, uh, and when, when books get translated, good books uh, you know, are adapted to films, they get a chance to know the story, uh, which otherwise they wouldn't have probably read. Yeah, so but for me, it's redundant, right? Okay. I would directly write a, a film and shoot it the way that I do. Do, so, right. Uh, that extra step of writing a novel or, or a book will, will not make not sense be. to me. Okay. So I'd, write, I'd like to write a book, which will be a book not to be converted to a movie uh, necessarily, but just for the pleasure of writing. There's so much that you can do while writing a book. Mm -hmm. um, if, uh, if you don't worry about its pictorial representation. You know, there are so many great writers, some of the greatest writers that I've uh, 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 read.
dead. Many of the existentialist writer crop, they, you, you can't adapt them into movies and you should not. Right. But they do serve a purpose, those books. Okay. So I'd like to belong to that as an author. Okay. So uh, coming to stories, you know, on films, we are talking about films here. So um, uh, what, what do you think, you know, are, are, are there any elements which makes a story powerful? I mean, like, how do you plan your stories? Uh, stories, I think, by the very nature, mm -hmm. are very unplanned. Okay. And uh, there's no reason that you say them or, um, or, or want to write them except for the fact that they come naturally to you and they are like an infection. And uh, you want to catch somebody in the middle of the road and for some reason start to tell him this story. It's a need. The need arises in the person to tell a story first. He's, I'm very often not aware of why or what good is it or whether anyone will be interested in it or not. It is just an internal need to try to tell this story. You must have heard that people talk about poets that Shair ko koi bhi mil jata hai to wo pakad ke usko kavita sunana shuru kar deta hai. So, shaam ke vakt mein log avoid karte hai Shair ko. So, writers are avoided. And so, I also find myself engaging unnecessarily with people trying to befriend them with guile and uh, trying to tell them the story, any story that's going on in my mind. So that is how it originates. Okay. I feel also that the story, uh, it, it does not, I mean, you. I feel that I do nothing uh, to... Extraordinary. Yeah, to I do yeah. nothing to cultivate them. They happen on Just their like own. Okay. They start collecting uh, and there are, they are usually smaller masses that join together at some point of time and then become the whole story. Do you think that's that's probably the reason that people relate to your stories because it's it's about you know modern day people you know their lives the relationships the complications surrounding the relationship so they can relate to your stories probably that's the reason you have been able to reach out. Uh, I think the reason people can relate to my um, stories is because I know no better than them. I am not. Uh, oh wow, so that kind of thing works in this audience, huh? So. Okay, I'll try to be modest for your claps. <laughs> yeah, I feel that um, most of my inspiration, most of the things that inspire me or have inspired me to write stories, make movies, have been drawn from life itself. It's not been drawn from books or cinema. Uh, it's more from life itself. You know... Um, what do you see and observe? What I see and observe and what I, what I imagine could have happened. So there is this man sitting over there, there's a man standing outside and he's waiting for someone to come. That's all I see, but then I can imagine that, oh, maybe he's waiting for a girl to uh, come and will the lift door open, uh, will it open and will the girl come, will, a, will the girl, girl come and then what are they going to do with each other, etc. So then all of that forms the basis of the story. story. So it's around real life incidents. Okay, there, there are a few observations that I have, you know, uh, pertaining to your stories, your film stories. You know, I'll start on a lighter note first. Uh, there's a lot of travel, you know. They are either traveling in train, koi truck mein ja raha hai, koi bike mein ja raha hai. I love Ashkal mein, they were all, you know, flying all the time. So there's a lot of travel, travel happening in your film. Is it because you travel a lot or is it because you haven't been able to travel a lot so you make them travel a lot? <laughs> I think, uh, um, believe it or not, it is both. Okay. I do travel a lot, but I still feel that I have not traveled as much as I'd like to. So... So you make them... When I, yeah. So I, I... And different modes of... <laughs> different modes of... <laughs> True. So, uh, travel as well. Yeah, so I guess that reflects in my movies. But there's one more thing. Um, I feel when you travel and where people don't... Where you are out of your regular life, gives you the chance of being um, something different from what you have to be every day in your life. You know, very often I feel that uh, people who live in a certain setup, um, because everybody knows them in that setup as a particular person, they try to be that person. 
And therefore, when, they, when this person goes out somewhere where people don't know him in the same way, then he feels fresh because people don't expect him to behave in any way. Right. So sometimes he can behave in a different way. I think travel, personally, to me, brings that freshness. Okay. And uh, I, I think I like it, so it reflects in my movies. Okay. So, but then, you know, uh, besides the literal travel part, you know, there's, there's always a journey that your, uh, you know, protagonist goes through. In, in, in most of your stories I've seen, you know, there's this journey of uh, self-realization, you know. Most of them are lost in the beginning and they're looking for something and they find it at the end of the film. That's, that's a particular pattern that I've observed in most of your films. Is it because, uh, uh, you know, it, it reflects your own uh, life or is it, what is it that Intyaz is looking for uh, in his life? You know, how does this happen that everybody, you know, you see uh, Karina in Job We Met, you know, she w goes through a journey of self-realization. She realizes, okay, this was Mr. Wrong, this is Mr. Right. You know, uh, Alia, you know, she decides to break free in this entire journey that she takes. She realizes that, you know, she wants to get her freedom. This is not the life. She wants to be a strong and independent woman and that journey gives her that opportunity. So how is it that all your films have this, you know, lost souls? Uh, the self-realization journey and then achieving what they want to at the end of the film. How is it that? See, cinema gives the filmmaker a chance to do what he cannot do in his real life. <laughs> <laughs> or what he hasn't been able to do. It's, uh, it's aspirational. Okay. You know, cinema is aspirational, you must have heard. What it really means is that it's a collection of the aspirations of the filmmaker. <laughs> and uh, um, just as you said that people in your movie are lost. So that is Most a reflection of, of who I am. And, uh, um, and at the end of the movie, the of the movie is my aspiration. So, but, but then have you found yourself That's already? That's what, it's an aspiration. Are you, still, so are you still in the journey? It's an aspiration, okay. so I have not found myself. Okay. I think it will be very boring to have found yourself. I'm scared of finding myself. How is it that, you know, most of your films have a lot of, uh, you know, importance around, you know, it, it revolves around love and relationship, most of them, you know, so any, any specific reason that, you know, you have uh, stuck to this genre of love and romance and it's, not experimented with the... Uh, it's not by design. Okay. Um, it's, it has, it has so happened. It's definite, definitely not deliberate. In fact, there have been times where I've thought that I should make movies where there is no love but, uh, uh, or no relationship. Uh, but I really couldn't think of a story like that. So I feel that these are the stories, the ones that I've made, that come naturally to me. I can't make or I'm not interested in making anything else, although I try to make my movies very different from each other, but it's really, I mean, if I pose this question to you mm -hmm. or to people over here that what, tell me a story or a movie which has, in which there is no love relationship or there is no love Element in the way. Yeah. Uh, I don't think anyone can come up with a story. Can you? Just give it a thought for a minute if anyone can think of a story with no love. Which one? Just one. Horror one. She's talking about the horror films. I don't want to get into... <laughs> A lot of people love that, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> it's more of... Yeah, some of the existential uh, stuff is also about longing, yeah. You know, and th that's, that's love. It's not necessary that there has to be a woman and a man and they should be making out. It could be, you know, just longing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. These stories don't come to me, but I'm not trying to categorize myself. Okay. But, you know, in, when we're talking about, again, we're talking about stories recently, uh, uh, of course, it's a very n new trend that I've seen is small city stories. You know, yeah. they, they are also coming on, on screen now. Like you, we have Gangs of Asipur, or, you know, we had Uran, which was from, based in Jamshedpur, uh, which, which from where you belong, of course. So uh, how good is it for cinema? Because there, there are stories that small cities, like even Bhuvaneshwar, has to say, but they don't get represented too often in, in films. So, you know, what, what, what is your take on that? Well, I feel that, uh, you know, Bhubaneswar is not really a small city, but cities are the size of uh, Bhubaneswar and, you know, Jaipur and 
Patna or um, these places are very cultural and there are lots of stories in the nooks and corners of this city, lots of, uh, in, in these cities. Lots of people who are in bigger cities, people like myself making movies, have also come from smaller cities like these. And they've carried their stories. They sometimes place these stories in Bombay or Delhi, etc., and sometimes not. Like I feel that, um, you know, for instance, Jab We Met, mm -hmm. uh, almost all of it was in smaller towns and cities. None of it was in a big city, and it was still popular. The popular, movie. so very popular. In fact, popular is an <laughs> yeah. So um, and also there was Love Aajkal, which was m more a big city film. But at the same time, it had smaller corners of it that is. big city. Um, highway was like that. And this particular movie that I'm uh, making now, Tamasha, it's about a kid who grows up in Shimla. OK. Um, so that also has a small city thing. I feel that a smaller, small cities in India are very dramatic. Um, and that's the reason why more and more filmmakers are uh, making movies about small cities now. OK. Since you've just, uh, you know, spoken about Tamasha, there's, there's something that, I, you know, you, I wanted to ask is that generally there's a very typical answer, you know, which, which uh, you all, the entire fraternity believes in. I believe you ask an actor, you ask an actress, you ask a filmmaker uh, about their upcoming or the next film, and they always have uh, the same answer, all of them. Oh, I'm, I'm doing this very different role this time, and, you know, it's, it's really different. This time, it's really different. And you ask a filmmaker, he comes up with the same thing. Oh, my story is really different this time. Aapne to hadi kar di, aapne to film mein bhi laga diya hai. Not all stories are the same. Why should it be the same story for Tamasha? So, uh, you know, what is it? Is it actually uh, not the same story? I mean, how different is it? Now, you really have to watch it and, and <laughs> tell me. Because obviously, I'm not going to fall for this one and say, no, actually, it is a different story. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, so it's actually smarter for me to say that, no, it's exactly the same story that every film is. In fact, let me go so far to say that all stories are the same. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel that um, um, when, uh, when uh, Ravan kidnaps Sita and takes her away um, across the ocean to an island, it's very similar to Paris taking Helen away across the ocean and Ram going there to fight um, the big battle is like the Trojan War which the Greeks fought and got Helen back, got Sita back. So it's like you will feel that there is something common in most of the stories you know. So it's all the same story. So, so therefore, why, why, my so film is not a different story at all. Okay. It's the same old story. It's the same old story, but then why does it have a, you know, thoda sa bolna hi padega, you know? Kyun, aisa kyun? Why should all the story be the same? Because this time we are saying that it's the same story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, but then, you know, there's another thing. This, this of course, is an entirely personal uh, observation. Uh, oh my in, God, in, you're in getting your personal. <laughs> huh? okay. Yeah, I'm getting a little personal here. About your films, you know, you, you said, you know, you've... Uh, Mostly you, you know, it's about love, like we were just discussing relationship and, but you know, I also feel at times uh, in, in, in your stories, uh, the love, love funda gets a little overrated. You know, it, it's like, uh, there's always a uh, thing in, in some of your films, at least I've seen that, you know, that this is element that everything is fair in love and war. That was a dialogue for Jab We Met, of course. But it, it also reflects in uh, most of your films that when you are in love, you know, almost everything is justified. You know, do you really believe in that? that when you are in love, everything is justified, so? The honest answer to that is that I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel that um, um, you should in life do what naturally comes to you and what uh, you instinctively and impulsively feel because your subconscious is guiding you over there. If you feel absolutely like doing something, um, it's usually because of a feeling which can be categorized as love. I don't know whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing. Um, and when I'm making a movie and when I have a character do a certain thing, I'm not necessarily saying that this is the right thing to do. Okay. I'm just saying as a storyteller that this is what Geet does or Meera what does or Geet Jair feels does or, what, yeah, whatever. or Veera feels. She doesn't want to go back. 
I'm not saying that is what every, see, movies um, cannot assume to be the code of conduct, you know. It's not a legal document. So it's just that in the story, she felt like doing this, and this is what happened at the end of it. So, but then you just said that, you know, you draw inspiration from what you see yes. and observe. So yeah. you, that means either you've seen uh, things happening uh, like that or, or you feel it yourself. Since you've said you don't feel yes. it to yourself, uh -huh. so you're not very sure about it. So which means that you see people uh, like this all around all you? All around me. All around me. People who take impulsive decisions, people who, um, who uh, uh, gain a lot of power mm -hmm. from their emotional uh, reactions. And do and change the course of their lives also sometimes very very impulsively very illogically sometimes to their peril sometimes to their great benefit. So uh, do I see something in life and that is why I do it in a movie? Yeah, but then for every story I have also seen both the endings. You know I sometimes see that two people get married ghar se bhag karke and they are very happy together. Sometimes they are not very happy together. So it really depends on how you're looking at that at story. It. See, stories, there's no doubt about it, stories play an important, integral part of all your film. You can, you can even say that you know, stories are your heroes in your films. Has that always been a conscious decision to make, you know, give more importance uh, to the story of the film? Because a lot of films today have no story. <laughs> so uh, it, has it always been a conscious decision for you? That you know, I have to make, give, you know, first do a good story and then plan the film? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yes. because, because you get to see films today which actually do not have a story. But they still, you know, manage a commercial success. Maybe that's why I'm not managing commercial success <laughs> very well. <laughs> because, because you have a story? Yeah, it's coming in the way. <laughs> okay, that's being modest. That's, huh? that's absolutely being modest. That's the formula, yeah. Okay, see, can you are self-effacingly <laughs> brilliant I'm being right now. <laughs> Okay, see we are here, uh, you know, uh, there's one more question that I actually wanted to ask uh, since Lockdown Bhul Gaiti. Literary festival, may you, you hear, you know, literary festival, that gives a platform to a lot of, uh, you know, authors, eminent authors, writers, they all come together, they sit for sessions, and it also gives an opportunity to the young, you know, masses who want to pursue a career, you know, as a, as a writer, as an author, because they get a lot of ideas when they come and attend such festivals. But, you know, there are, uh, there are a lot of people who have good stories to tell. You know, but they don't know how to reach, uh, you know, good filmmakers like you. So uh, why why isn't something being done? You know, what what should be rather done? Because I'm sure even I I, I mean among this audience, I, I'm sure there would be some young people who have some interesting ideas, some you know budding ideas coming out of them. And okay, I want to. I wish I could share this story with Intiaz. But you know that, that those dreams uh, just die because they don't get an opportunity. So uh, you know what what do you think should be done? to uh, give a chance to these people? There are two things I'd like to say over here. Um, to start with the second point first, uh, this is not a new story either. Um, how many years has cinema been in India, approximately? 100, 100 years, right? More than 100 years now. 100, yeah, 100 years of cinema 100. happened last year. And constantly, uh, people with stories have been making their way, finding their way into wherever they have to be and by doing whatever they have to do to make their stories into films, to publish their stories uh, as books um, or to, you know, theatrically represent their stories, okay? So this difficulty that uh, you are saying a lot of people in the room might be facing that what do I do, I have got good stories but how but do I, I reach do. somewhere, etc is a story is again a very old story and there is no broad based solution for it either i'm from a small town too and if i were to go back and figure out what i did right or what i did wrong or what uh, and what can i share with you guys in honestly i will not be able to give you any very sound piece of advice which will be relevant to you um, but i do know that if you do want to and if your focus is in jaisa bolte na ki arjun's focus was chidiya ki aankh par not in the peripherals not in the glamour not in uh, the fame of the film industry 
but in the work of the film industry in the in the in the heart of storytelling if so be your focus you will find a way you will have to find a way and if you are saying that there has to be why is there not a platform wherein i can share my stories with those people who can help me make it let me tell you that the rule of the world is that if it is your need you have to make make that bloody platform nobody is going to make it for you find your own ways there is no there is no guru mantra that anyone can give you a lot of these great people say say a lot of great things which sound very nice on the backs of books but none of them can be followed exactly for uh, as a as a mantra of your success you have to create that you know it is said uh, that the only relevant guide book that you have when you're traveling is the one that you write during the travel so this is your time you can sit and complain uh, or you can take note of the fact that the world is perhaps more it's more easy now to reach out to thousands and millions of people than it has ever been you know you've got the internet you can you you have an you have a phone which has a video you can shoot edit and put things within an hour on the net and uh, internet has many disadvantages but it it is an absolutely um uh, what shall i say it believes in no caste creed uh, gender nothing it's a universal platform where anything might trend anything might be uh, successful so go ahead do that and believe me there are lots many more chances now than there have ever been so take advantage of that so that's the first part of what i had to say say okay now okay. Are you, do you have the patience to listen to the second part yeah sure of course <laughs> okay well uh, i suddenly it hit me when you were talking about about uh, me being in a, at a literary festival you know i i i feel very encouraged being here um, because i feel that literature see i'm a literature student um and i realized that i have studied the works of a lot of people who while making or writing those works were not aware that they were writing literature like shakespeare uh, who's perhaps the biggest name that we have in english literature at least thought he is david dhawan you know he thought that i'm making these plays and i'm putting in into them all kind of uh, you know sexual innuendo and smart comments and all kinds of imagery uh to make this play interesting for this crowd that can give me the money for me to sustain my life um and he thought this is drama this is not books so how can it be literature but it was literature we study it and now it is relevant in a million ways um not only in terms of uh, storytelling etc but also socially and and thought at what was getting popular around those days i feel cinema is a a huge part of contemporary literature yeah. and it if, whether we see it or not like that the coming generations will definitely see it like that so um as much as there can be a link between the traditional um people of literature and, and people of cinema, cinema. Uh, it will be good for both great i think that's that's a, that's a wonderful thought uh, well uh, coming back to your uh, films once again um, you know i had read in in a couple of interviews that uh, after uh, after most of your films are done and the films have actually been hit you've actually regretted <laughs> no you've actually regretted okay why i shouldn't have done this this way i shouldn't have uh, done that is that is that true do yeah, i mean yeah, do you actually true. okay so if in that case which which is that one film you think you should have you know not made it the way you have all of them all um, of them yeah yeah there are um yeah socha na tha <laughs> of course yeah i mean socha na tha more than any should i have made it i should have made it because i got the chance to do so um but should i have made it differently totally totally 
That's, no, that's, no, that's, no. that's an interesting question. No, no, I'm were a... You, were you that character? <laughs> that time, yes. I think I was a combination of all those three characters. And uh, you just said that I'm, I'm a decent human being, <laughs> apart from being brilliant and all that, right? <laughs> that was on stage. No, but you know, accidentally you stumbled upon the truth there. So I think I'm much more decent than what Viren was in that film, what Abhay played in that film. So it's, no, I'm not like that at all. Confused. Yeah. I think at the time I made uh, Socha Natha, I wasn't as confused as Viren. But later in life I did become. W w was that why we had Rockstar? I'm reaching there, I'm reaching there. Sorry, you know, what? was that why we, we got Rockstar? Um, you said yeah. you weren't that confused at that point and it came later. So uh, was, it, was it that why? What because I like uh, Rockstar, I think, uh, you know, I felt Ranbi's uh, entire uh, journey had a lot of elements of where he was lost, you know, he was confused. There were a lot of emotions that were happening at the same time in the entire film, you know? So uh, was, it, was it because of that? Uh, no, was that actually, you? Uh, no, it was, n none of them is me. Okay. But uh, the, uh, what I really like about Rockstar, and it was, it had a lot of difficulty uh, for me, is that this guy, Janardhan Jakhar, uh, Jordan, Jordan, that Ranbir plays, is a person without any cerebral action in his brain. He is vacant. He doesn't think. He, uh, he doesn't have a process of thinking at all. So, he's only reacting out of impulse, out of, uh, he, he's like action and reaction, he's almost like an animal. He does things that come to him and suffers without knowing why he's suffering. True. So, he, uh, he's not articulate, there is no other way for him to express himself. Um, his usual expression is crass, ki um, no. hot cool dono lagti hai saath saath. You know, things like that. Girlfriend Manja Miri. So, obviously, he has not much success as a, as a talker in his life. So, it all collects together in his music. I really like the fact that he is so inarticulate. And I think that's what makes him so emotional. And also have, as you're saying, these very mixed feelings, which he doesn't understand. So, is it difficult to, uh, you know, sketch a character like that the in a story? Uh, the difficulty in sketching a character like that was that how do I explain what he's feeling to the audience when he himself doesn't know it that was my difficulty probably that's the reason few of the audience <laughs> didn't understand <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly because you had the difficulty yeah but half the time I didn't understand what was going on either <laughs> okay so uh, so but then you know tell me is is uh, you know like we were just talking about um, Tamasha, you know, I'll get back to Tamasha since it's about to release. So, uh, so will I say that since you've said that you want to uh, rework all your films that you have made, and this one is just about to come, so are you happy with what you've done? See, I'm always now since you've already done that. Huh? It's not released, but the film is over, right? The, you, no, you I'm still editing. Then okay. there's sound design, background music, all of okay. that. Okay. Okay. So while I'm making a movie, I'm you trying to make it good. And although I have some doubts, but I always have the option of clearing them and making them as good as I can make them during the time of the release. So usually when I, the, mu the film releases, I feel it's okay. But a little later, a month goes by and I feel that uh, yeah, this, could have been this could have been better. And that process just continues. And after a few years, I'm really ashamed of every movie that I make. I, I don't think, but the uh, you know uh, the crowd would agree in that because we've no, all um, we've all loved your films. In fact, well, I'm glad that the crowd doesn't agree. So you're happy. <laughs> yeah, and and you that know that they don't feel the same as you. <laughs> huh? Yeah, but then since I'm making the movies, uh, and it's it's not only out of modesty that I'm saying it. Um, I guess since I've, I'm so close to the movies that I make, anybody is beyond a point of time the defects start to show up more to me, um, luckily, and hopefully, than uh, other people. But they do show up. Um, and uh, so the, uh, it's, it's difficult for me. I really don't, beyond a point of time, I feel that there is no connection with me and the film at all. Sometimes I think of Jabbi Met, 
I, I love no the movie. I absolutely I made it. love that movie. I have to tell you. Yeah, uh, and I don't uh, don't have any connection with it as though I have made it. And sometimes I laugh as though I'm hearing a joke for the first time in that movie. But it's like it gives me a sense of it's like a long lost friend or somebody. You know, like I knew this guy at some point of time, and he's cool, but I really have nothing to do with it anymore. Okay. So you know, uh, you know, before we open uh, the floor for audience interaction, because I know they're all waiting to ask you questions. I have, uh, you know, last a few questions that I need to ask you. Uh, you're just talking about Ranbir's dialogue. You know, dialogues I believe play a very also an important. You know, because I've seen they 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 are like just like what you and me, you know, talk in our daily lives. You know, that's is that again. again a very I know I know no better. So that's what I wrote. That's what okay, I so do. So that's 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 the reason. And the other component I feel, which has also uh, been a, a very integral part of your stories, your films, I would rather say, is music. Uh, you know, it's, you have always come up with films which has, you know, again, that's, that's uh, is, it, is it like, you know, you think, okay, I story to do my dialogues are good and the music is good, the rest will be seen. Of course, star cast, I'm not going to get into that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, uh, you think like that, that no, I should do this, something like that. You know, because your music is really good in all I your films. I don't know. I don't, uh, I'm not like musically gifted or anything. In fact, one of my biggest regrets in life is that I don't know how to play any musical instrument. I still feel sometimes like Rehman sir tells me that you can still learn the piano and all of that. Um, I'm not musically gifted or anything. I don't know. Um, I'm interested in music. More than even listening to music, I feel I'm interested in the process of making music now. Because it is one of the most interesting things that directors in India get to do, is to is to make music and shoot that music, you know, shoot sure. action to that. Mu and it's it's a very magical time on set, when, uh, you know, the nagra plays, and the music plays out, and then you you have a certain action going on, and and the the camera moves, and you are shooting this action. It's very very magical. I really enjoy it, but I don't know where it comes from. And uh, I have no knowledge about music as such. So um, I think that, that, that was, that's what works for you most again, of the time. Again, exactly. <laughs> that I know no better. Yeah, so, so I'm not uh, coming from a position of knowledge. I'm usually only coming from a position of interest, that I'm interested in this. I like this. So um, that's always my choice. As far as dialogue is concerned, I tried like hell never to write dialogue in my movies. Because but then you have. I have always, like, barely scraped through my Hindi, um, you know, cla um, tests. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mrs. Renu Agarwal, who was my teacher in school in Jamshedpur, was extremely surprised when she realized that I'm writing dialogue in Hindi. And uh, she used to say even before that, lagta hai kal yug aa raha hai. <laughs> so that was. That is what I think she had to say at that point of time. I wanted someone else to write the dialogue of Socha Nata, but because there was a budgetary issue over there, uh, at the end I was kind of, I had to write it. I think even for Jab We Met. Uh, then I wrote for Jab We Met because there was no time and we were like uh, caught in snow for what, 24 hours and I, I had to be locked in a room. I had very little time. So I just thought, let me write it. In the third film also I wanted um, someone else to write the dialogue, but I told the producer that you get to, he said that you have award mil gaya abhi film fair ka. Aap, how can you not write the dialogue write the of dialogues. this film? So then from there, but now I've understood after six movies that I'd better write the dialogue. <laughs> it just works <laughs> like that. Now I can't okay. have anybody else write. Okay. All right. Uh, deviating a lit little away from, you know, what the topic is, you know, if I'm not mistaken, you've been a part of Odisha, you know, for uh, quite a few years, you know. So what, what, what are the memories that you have of this place? Since you are here, so I'm sure people would like to know that. Um, I have spent my early childhood in Bhubaneswar. Um, so that got over recently, and uh, um, actually Bhubaneswar specifically, uh, and uh, uh, my actually my cousin brother Papa Chacha I call him. Okay. Uh, there's a long history of why I call him Chacha is sitting over here, and uh, there's Altaf and uh, my niece who's more like a sister Chimpu is sitting somewhere in Bhabi. 
so all these people are here J bhubneshwar is like my second home this is a place where uh, it's not only that i feel like it's my home i also feel it's my responsibility um this 95 surya nagar i've grown a small kid from over there and it is the love um of that house of these people and this city that i always carry in my heart and uh, um it is a privilege and a special pleasure for me to always come back to uh, bhubaneswar specifically um and uh, yeah i've always felt that it's it's home for me and and the sweets huh <laughs> uh, that's what i was saying that you know that's in manglabag but uh, no i was just saying to uh, at the uh, din uh, lunch table that if we do a good export of the chena podo it will be it can get it can get very famous internationally you know because a very similar kind of thing uh, is sold at very premium prices in italy and spain and all of that you know and here you just like so inexpensive and yet so pure and so high quality so long live chena podo <laughs> the rosh the rosh yeah yeah we were just having this argument that the bengalis are claiming it so uh, i'm saying that i feel that no uh, odisha actually invented uh, the rasgulla and the shampa is here <laughs> no but i um yeah yeah no no i'm with uh, odisha invented rasgulla <laughs> also also uh, because of uh, the logic is that in jagannath puri they used to give it for a lot many years right yeah you know and, and uh, they're so happy <laughs> you how come you're not clapping <laughs> Okay, now, now for the most Sorry. important question that comes from your association, are we are we going to see in near future you shooting a film here or maybe picking your stars from okay, Indonesia? Me, yeah. Um. You know, you can you can look around. You can look around to your you know left, left, and then you know. <laughs> so if, if there's a possibility, you know, you just uh, it's it's it's, a, it's an important question actually. But uh, uh, on a serious note, I feel I I've also travelled on the road. of uh, orissa a lot okay um and i think it's a very very beautiful land orissa unfortunately it's not only orissa i think the eastern side of the country has been has not gotten as much attention uh, in the let's say last 50 60 years you know uh, coincidentally as long as we've been independent uh as the western side has or the you know other parts have but it's very beautiful um and i think it, there is the scope of you know film shootings etc uh, in in these sides a lot so there is a possibility there is obviously a possibility it's it's going to happen but there's just also just just the just the shooting or you know including your <laughs> you know including you know, choosing yeah. choosing your star cast as well i mean i'm just curious you know, yeah. is, is it just the You know, is it is it just Odisha is beautiful, or is it just you know people of Odisha are also equally uh, beautiful? People <laughs> of uh, Odisha, especially on this stage, are very beautiful. Okay, <laughs> I think I I I really honestly now feel. अच्छे दिन तो पक्का आ गए अब तो बिल्कुल ही आ गए हैं. But anyways, before we open, you know, audience, uh, you know, for interaction, you said you've been associated with uh, Odisha. So, uh, how about saying something in Odia? Maybe maybe for your film Tamasha, you could ask people to. Yeah, I. Yeah? <laughs> you were trying to tra train me but i'll get very nervous now because there are so many so people try. to judge my odia no no you can no, try no but there was a time no i think i'll i'll You'll pass that else? for now okay you know i'll pass that for now but there was a time when i used to come to orissa much more frequently than i do and where there was a time when i was quite okay and fluent in uh, odia yeah that's and what i'd heard yeah but now you know the surprising thing is that people forget languages you know you don't um and i feel now that i um although i i follow everything in oria but i don't think i can uh, have the confidence to speak anymore 
it doesn't come like that anymore okay not even so you're not going to say even you could try saying muta maku bhala pauji maybe that that that, that means no, to that, anybody out here <laughs> but um um no no may, maybe later later Let's just, yeah, okay so i i i think <laughs> So you know, it's it's. Uh, I'm not getting too lucky out there. So uh, we will have some questions uh, from from the audience. I'm sure, too many of them coming. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> you need a lot of mics, yeah. in fact. Yeah, yeah, because there are so many questions. So I thought we must. You should give get them a some chance. volunteers to carry the mics around. Yeah, yeah. nimble footed young chaps so that's that's let's the that's the reason i decided you know we must start the audience interaction let, because let's not, baad mein mere ko problem hone wala hai let's not deprive her of the evening exercise but uh, yes sir <laughs> so my question is uh, once uh, at an oscar event uh, robert de niro told sean penn i mean by giving him the award he said stardom tends to get in the way of acting so part a of the question is do you see that happening with the stars or the actors that you direct and since you are a star director yourself does that get in the way of direction and does does basically the success way on you no as i um i feel that for most actors who have achieved success uh they have had to not only be good actors but also be smart to not mix stardom with acting um and as i had earlier mentioned that if you if your aim is actually to the center on the on the uh, eye of the fish and if you really enjoy the process of acting then when you do get the chance to do it you will not get distracted by anything and uh, stardom etc you know and stardom is not anything that you can uh, you can consume in any way you you don't know what it is so for people who are supposed to be stars it's not as though they are any different from you and me and i've met many of those people who are i mean there's no doubt about the fact that they would be stars so to speak but they are also e exactly like anyone else um it's true that they can't like interact and spend as much time with people with other people as as much as the people would want to um but if you uh, chances are that if, they, if there's an actor who um will let stardom fame glamour etc interfere with his acting he'll never make it in the first place you know he'd never be able to get on to the to the second step so that is one thing and as far as i'm concerned i feel completely i mean no different than i have ever felt in my life uh, no 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 i don't even remember i, so, I don't so in the can, can i add a little yes. to that you know so yeah. uh, do, don't you measure the power of stories through box office success your power of stories since i have none no box office success really? i cannot really <laughs> measure uh, okay. it is not a good measure for me to use okay okay yeah, sir yeah yeah please good evening sir here yes here sir uh, sir most of your films have the protagonists being a little complicated or you know confused so how definite you are while choosing the complications <laughs> um actually i try to be definite Uh, when i'm choosing a certain complication you know so that otherwise it just becomes completely incomprehensible i i understand the question that you are asking and the answer is i try to be specific in the in the confusion that i want to uh, put the character through in my films yes thank you thank you sir uh, so my name is oliver das so uh, what percentage of industry people do you think actually no film on a deeper level and so what oh is my the my god you're really asking the wrong person because <laughs> if there is any percentage i am in that percentage of people who don't know what films are okay. so thank you sir <laughs>
at least you believe me <laughs> hello sir hi i'm in class 8 i want to be a filmmaker could you please share some tips i should start working on from now itself listen are you serious or are you just trying to be smart right now yes okay what what's your question she wants Could tips you share me. some tips with me i should start working on from now to be a filmmaker do you write stories yes you write them down yes i have a blog and i write oh wow them. so you're already on your way i think that that's the first step if you can write it's very good um can you take your phone or your papa's phone or anything that has a good camera and uh, try to shoot these stories now okay try to shoot them and uh, if they if your stories involve people like if there is you know some characters in your story then you ask people around you anyone who you think can do a good job to be those people for that time tell them what to do say to start start rolling the camera and say action okay so that's a start thank you so much uh hello imtiaz we have four people here from jamshedpur wow long live <laughs> yeah settled here in bhubneshwar yeah, yeah. i'm sure many yes. others must be here as well from jamshedpur yes. we came here to show our solidarity number 1 number 2 to congratulate you and tell you we are very proud of you thank you ma'am yes and uh, my question was that what inspires imtiaz the most people people around me yeah yes and you talked about uh, when you watch your films you feel there is always some scope of improvement Yeah I feel that happens to each one of us. I think so too yes. So yes. it's not a big deal you don't need to worry about it. It ha- it happens to each one of us when we do something and we listen to so many other opinions we feel yes I could have done it that way. Yeah and more yeah? than other, see you can convince other people that you're foolish you're not seeing the brilliance of my work etc etc. No no but you have you have done your best. Yeah exactly. There so are other people who are better also. So if they have any exactly, suggestions it's yeah, okay. True. It's, and yeah there is nothing called the best anyway yes. you know you can always you could You can just do your things. best and you've done your best and we are very proud of not you. Not only could you have done your best but your best is for that time. Yes you know? exactly. And then at a later time you might feel that something else could have been the best but you the time is gone. True true. So like uh, Mahesh Bhatt once said that films are not finished they are always abandoned. Yeah. <laughs> true. Okay. But that's not true. I'm trying to finish my film now. <laughs> Tamasha. Uh good evening sir. You just mentioned that you were not very good at Hindi. At so, Hindi, yeah. So my question is when you write your movies, uh which script do you write it in? Devnagari or like nowadays you can write Hindi in the Roman script also? I do that. Okay. I know how to write Devnagari and I uh, when I have to write with my hand, I write uh, in the Devnagari script. But if I'm typing, I'm used to now typing in Roman. my question is to both the panelists uh, in this session the topic was power of storytelling uh, i asked this question to mr imtiaz ali this uh, all the great stories when retold in films they have lost their souls when guide was released arkenar and wrote in the editorial of times of india my misguided guide and when and when uh, charulata the movie was made on rabindranath's great story nashta need nashta need is 100 times more powerful than the movie who, do you, who decides that the readers the readers okay. the readers and also the writer the how writer many, how many readers have read that book and how many readers Rabindana, have seen that film rabindranath's story have been read by millions of readers and also upamanyu chatterjee english august and indian story hmm. the film was uh, five times more boring than the book How do you know this statistics like I I have read the book and I have also seen the movie Okay fine okay. And best ex- best example is uh, three idiots three ah. I- three idiots was a box office hit but if you read five point someone it's it's 100% more thrilling than the movie It's more thrilling Yes 
There are people in the room that are not agreeing. There are some some masala elements. Some some. Okay, fine, fine. The book the books lost its soul. My point is that the book gives lot of power of imagination to the readers, which films cannot give. Films are always shot in a frame. They provide a frame for understanding and also a frame for imagining. Okay. Books books are unlimited. Thank you. Good evening, Imtiaz sir. Hi. I'm really a great fan of yours, and uh, I really admire all your movies. So I just wanted to ask, like movies directed by you, like Jovi Met, got a remake in Hollywood also, like Leap Year in 2010. So how you feel like when your movies get remake in Hollywood also? I don't know whether it was technically a remake. I've not seen Leap Year, but a lot of people say that it's perhaps. Yeah, know. they also don't uh, agree, but uh, it's almost a remake. I've seen both the movies. And the job we met is also like same like leap year only. So how um, do you feel about that? I I mean, how do I feel? I feel great, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Sir, uh, since we're talking about the power of stories, yes. uh, I believe, sir, the characters that you've written uh, somehow are the most passionately written characters in Hindi cinema for quite some time. So let be Janardhan Jhakad or let be Veera Tripathi or Mahavir Bhatti. So somehow they're just out and out rebellious and don't fit in the social picture and somehow find their way out towards the end. So can we relate that rebellious character which motivates you somehow because that's somehow you? Uh, behind them, and you are rebellious inside. It's not only me. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not me the way I am in my life. Sometimes it is a part of me that is rebelling. You know, um, it, it's not directly me uh, completely, but yes, it has to be some part of my thought or my experience that that. Goes into that character. Otherwise, I wouldn't know how to really portray that character. So, so are we going to have that rebellious trait in Tamasha too? <laughs> yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. You made my day. <laughs> so, you you have finally given out some information about Tamasha at least. Yeah, it's like um, okay. Let me give some more. Um, sure, you would love to hear that. It's it's about f- breaking free. To answer your question. Uh, the passionate gentleman, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So it's about breaking free from the rut of, uh, you know, the society, your expectations, other people's expectations that form the the format, the template within which you've got to live and act. And everyone is born so special, but they lose it as they go along. and they can tend to become ordinary till someone points out the uniqueness in you the quality that you seem to have lost and the real you know the the breakdown of the system to become who you actually are that's the world of tamasha oh. hi imtiaz uh, my name is uh, pratish gupta hi sir Uh, I wanted to know whether you are planning a sequel for Rockstar. Uh, not yet, a sequel for Rockstar. Not yet, but maybe many years later. Okay. Um, it's been five years. I think next year is going to be five years to um, to Rockstar. Somebody is writing a book, a very anecdotal type book on the world of Rockstar. <coughs> and uh, we very often when we when we get together rehman sir ranbir or mohit or irshad uh, we talk about shall we do a film again which is the second part i feel that such a movie should be made when there is actually a story to be told not because we just need to make a second part and the good thing is that we can make this story any time you know 5 years later 2 years later 10 years later um so let's see it's definitely not on the cards right now a uh, second question uh, has uh, some incident or event in your stay at hindu college uh, influenced uh, any of your stories in the movies yeah it has influenced rockstar because it was in my stay in hindu college that i got to know of these uh, people like janardhan jakar who live in uh, who live in uh, delhi and who speak in a haryanvi tone and 
who are not cerebral at all. <laughs> Uh, as I, I was MPS. saying, and who, who they don't know how to communicate, and but they feel a lot. Yeah. Uh, hi, Amtiaz. Uh, here. Yeah. Okay. I am particularly fascinated by the women in your movie. I think all of so them. So am I. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all of them sort of challenge the status quo, and in an industry which is known to stereotype women, so. these are the women who are the rebels the agitators the anarchists and they never fit into the standards of beauty about how they should not be abusing about how they should not be drinking so do you think uh, your is it is it difficult to bring out women like that in an industry which is so prejudiced towards uh, liberating women per se and do you think that it's acknowledged enough by this industry okay i think primarily thanks a lot for the love i can read a certain appreciation that uh, you're trying to uh, uh, give to the women in my movie movies who i love a lot too and um, it's not difficult for me to you know make these characters because as i am saying i have borrowed very liberally from what i see around me and i these are the kind of women that i have seen around me um and if i have even if i have ever met a regressive woman who is trying to just do the right thing etc etc i have not been so impressed by her to actually you know try to represent her in a movie i i feel that I'm a big fan of women, you know, and I feel that that always gets you guys, huh? <laughs> But I feel I, I have seen the kind of things in the women around me that you see in my movies, in the women in my movies. That's what I'd like to say. I feel that it's not such a uh, the film industry. However, uh, I think you are judging it a little falsely. I don't think it's a very it's a place which is very prejudiced against women or anything of that sort. You must remember that movies represent the desire of the people, you know. Um there's a way of trying to cater to what is being demanded, you know. It is democratic in that way. So um it is somehow a reflection of what the society would also like to see so the difficulty is more on that account not because people in the film industry hate women and they don't want any liberal woman to be shown in cinema that's unfair uh, good evening mpas mohli here i'm here yes ma'am yeah uh, you know it's a kind of follow up question to what you said that bollywood is a reflection of society but my question is in india bollywood is considered as a religion and the actors and the actresses and the directors are considered as gods and goddesses so do you think the way filmmakers make movies there should be kind of responsibility the way they project the characters because nowadays we mostly many a times we see movies which are completely mindless scriptless and many a times many item songs have objectionable lyrics uh, and uh, so that's what my question is do you really think there should be kind of responsibility the way a film is made or should it be all the way for artistic freedom so only for artistic reason sorry what was the uh, artistic freedom yeah hmm um there has to be a sense of responsibility that filmmakers should use you know see as a filmmaker i can tell you what 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 i think what goes on in my mind um i feel that uh, i'm talking to lakhs and lakhs of people who get very influenced by the by by cinema because stories are very powerful which is the subject of today's discussion i feel that stories are uh, they they really shape behavior in especially the the growing up generation so i need to be sure that i'm not giving 
um, a, uh, a, any, you know, stilted um, uh, a, a morality over there. That I'm not glorifying things like uh, uh, communalism or smoking or things like that. So that I guess people should have. The other thing is that if I, um, artistic freedom should also exist because it's, it's, I think it's, it's not enough and it, it, it's somehow sometimes not even fair to have a body which has not much to do with the art of making movies to come and judge what the ethical, moral, etc. standards or the standards and practices of uh, films should be. So I don't really believe in the censor system of the country the way it exists. I know that I, I'm, you know, it's, I'm, I'm not clear about which way it should swing. There should be artistic freedom, but I don't know whether an external body should be uh, uh, kind of deciding. deciding, deciding those things. But the sense of responsibility is, but there is one evening factor. I think again the demo democratic nature of movies, because ultimately beyond a point of time, things will not fly, they will not be accepted if the general ethic of the people um, of the nation doesn't accept it. Yeah, uh, but the thing is that as the society is also gets influenced by Bollywood, the same as Bollywood gets influenced by society, sure. it's a kind of a cycle. Yeah. So if uh, the movie making is positive and gives across a message, do you think the society can also change? Uh, now the, For sure. For sure. I mean, if, if I look at myself, I feel that uh, people in movies uh, have been like people in my family. They have influenced me. And most of the movies that I've seen have had a positive message. You know, there's been, as we were discussing, a moral to a story. So I think uh, cinema is a very important tool in setting moral guidelines to a society. And, uh, and in a very powerful manner. If I were to say to you, um, if I were to give you something philosophical or, or a moral science lecture right now, it would be very boring, right? But then the same thing in a story would be very interesting, uh, uh, enchanting for you and you would follow it. So that's the kind of power of cinema. Thank you, Piers, for spending your evening with us. I think Bhuvaneshwar loves you. She, come, she came with a fractured hand to ask you a question. <laughs> so that, that, that just goes to show how much we... You know, Bhuvaneshwar is in love with you. Uh, hi, Imtiaz. Over hi. Here. Uh, uh, my name is Abhishek. Uh, in the song Sadda Hak from Rockstar, there's a very s subtle scene Tibet. of protest. Yeah, the free Tibet signs were blurred. So that kind of, you know, was a bit disappointing because the entire point of Sadda Hak was, you know, rebellion. Huh? The entire point of the song Sadda Hak was rebellion and I, I just found that the blurring to be a bit jarring. Could you, you know, wh why, why did that happen? Should I have not blurred it? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. So then the song wouldn't have come. <laughs> Would it have been better for your protesting type of nature? Uh, yeah, well, no, tell me, because I was in this predicament at some point. Um, well, to save the song, you might have made a bit, uh, But uh, the fact that it was there and it was blurred, the free Tibet uh, thing, um, but there was a presence of a million um, Tibetan flags, which are today the flags of no nation, unfortunately. At least we got to present it and the world got to see. And especially because it was blurred over there, there was more talk about it. Yeah, that's true. So I think it was okay. The choice that I had to make at that point, standing in the censor board room is that you knock off the song or you, uh, after bargaining, after a lot of bargaining, that you can go ahead if you just blur this little bit out. And I thought that it's fine. The point that is that we are trying to make will be made anyway. So we went ahead. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Good evening, sir. I'm here. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So uh, with all your films, one or the other character uh, is about to get married or is <laughs> supposed to be married. So any specific thoughts regarding marriage? That's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to change that part. In in this particular film, uh, there's nothing like that. So you, huh, no, trying. To, I'm rewinding. Um, in Highway, of course, Veera, that is Alia's character, married. was going to get married, and she is yes. uh, abducted. Yes. And uh, in Rockstar, she this one gets married. Yes. Heer gets married. In love, Ajkal, Meera gets married. Yes. But in job, we met Karina was supposed to get married and supposed to get married and she doesn't. Socha. Socha na tha the about to get married. Is are you asking why do people go away from their marriage plans? <laughs> yeah. Is that what you, you're too no, young like, to ask no, that? No, no, like <laughs> mar. No, like marriage has something to do. Uh, with your film, so that's what yeah, my point yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, I think. So, yeah. any specific thoughts regarding that? Um, I, you know, I feel that there is. Sometimes I feel that there is a disconnect between um, feeling a relationship and marriage. For instance, or or to put it in another way, a wedding can be beautiful, but a marriage need not be. It's, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing as as uh, as wanting to be with a woman. You know, marriage. in um has certain other things also certain other factors also as you will realize when you grow up a little bit more thank you so, so much so there there seems to be as i was growing up i thought there's a conflict over here it is not only two people living happily together it also has a social form and how to deal with this i guess that comes in my movies Hi, hi. Uh, hi, Mr. This is Mayank here. I wanted to ask: Is it true that Deepika is a comic book book fan in your next film, Tamasha? And uh, and are you also fan of that medium? And why did you decided to add that dimension to that Deepika's character in your next movie, Tamasha? Um, she's yeah. She in the movie, the girl that she plays, that is uh, Tara. Uh, she likes comic books, and she used to read. Asterix comics when she was growing up. Specifically, this particular Asterix in Corsica was her favorite uh, comic book, and that kind of inspires her to go to Corsica, where she meets this guy, and that's how the story starts. Yeah. So, but that's it. I mean, it's not as though she is. Her life is all about being an Asterix comics fan. She does other things. She just likes comics. Good Thank evening, Imtiaz. Uh, this is Chandra Mulika here. uh first of all uh, i want to congratulate you the way you portray the female characters uh, or as we call it naika uh, but um, i just want to uh, remind something like uh, in the in this women's day uh, there was a program on dd1 in which and also not only because of the program but, uh, but we can also realize it that no matter no matter we am i audible yes ma'am uh, so no matter what kind of uh, the strata of the heroine or whatever but often the filmmaker wants to portray the girl fair uh, maybe a middle class girl also so are you ever thinking of uh, breaking this jinx in our uh, as more than 100 years but uh, this is a pattern that is being followed by every filmmaker so you uh, saying what no fair fair the, yes yes Election. Complexion. even a middle class girl is also portrayed as very fair as if being dusky is not like uh, he, it actually conveys something different i mean uh, no, maybe hmm. so uh, my question is are you thinking of or could you ever try to bring uh, to break this jinx like uh, maybe a uh, heroine in your film maybe dusky and maybe you know high class maybe but Are you Deepika is dusky? Basically, yeah. basically, she's asking dusky beauty is getting a chance. In your yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's Deepika not about dusky beauty. No, it's not about the no. heroine as it looks off screen. Okay, okay, okay. just like regular uh, looking people in no, cinema. No, no, I am saying that the heroine may be dusky off screen, but when you are portraying your heroine, you portray her as very fair, and uh, you know uh, that is very a dreamy kind of thing. so maybe um, um one of the incident what uh, uh, another maybe nandita das ma'am said yes. that said that 
when she was going to portray girl of middle class the filmmaker asked her to take a makeup because the middle class girl should be very much fair no 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 i don't think that's accurate at all um no it, this is her statement i mean uh, so my uh, question is ever will you ever portray your heroine as a dusky and uh, yes i'd know, i'd love to i mean i don't know what you mean by dusky necessarily but i feel that um dipika is exactly that's what this what okay okay yeah um glamorous you know yeah the extra glamorization of women for them to be a part of movies is not necessary i mean geet geet's For character sure. in jabbi met uh, no, that even, was that was even, not very glamorized even at all even uh, alia the way she yeah, was in highway even, right highway exactly so uh, now alia and karina are fair girls no, that's you know what she said. but then um, if you see any class of people in let's say himachal pradesh or parts of punjab or kashmir they are all going to be fair fairness has nothing to do with glamour you know but uh, um, that extra glamour that we tend to put into women for them to be a part of the movies is not necessary i am actually interested in the real uh, the real look in fact there i'm i'm supposed to be in the film industry that director who wants his women not to wear makeup so it's like that yeah the last 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 yeah. question comes from a very good evening thanks ma'am um, i have a question and a request uh, this is about the power or influence uh, of uh, cinema on the society uh, when are you going to shoot your next movie in odisha yeah that's Already what she was <laughs> asking Already asked because him. that will have a great influence so now People that i have a heroine i just need a hero and then we'll start yeah and the request is uh, that please uh, apart from filming the great uh, locales and uh, beaches of odisha please also show See our the hills uh, of koraput and all huh apart from that we have lots many places beaches yeah. and other uh, hill stations as well uh, we have daringwadi and lot many uh, my request is please also do show the culinary cuisine and the sweets like rasgulla and chhena poda like you I'm mentioned i'm going to i'm going to uh, have a look at some of the sweets later tonight <laughs> yeah fine and please make your uh, heroine or hero also taste that so that the rest of the world can come to know i'm actually sweets. taking some for them from here <laughs> for sure lovely, lovely. and then maybe later it's it will be the other way around as well thank you so much Hi Amtias. Yeah. Yeah. Um hi Amtias, I have a question. I'm way back here. Yes ma'am. Okay, I have I want to know like since you've mentioned that your your movies are inspired from people. So yeah. in a way you are creating history, right? So somewhere down the line um like years from now, how would you like to see that you know that I have defined this era in this format? So what would your picture be? I don't know. Um because majority of your movies you know they are like bohemian they have a sufism in it which depicts something which is very contemporary cinema hmm. so you know if you go ahead and uh, you know see somewhere down the line because it is history like you said literature is which was history drama which turned into literature similarly movie it's my perception and i hope you agree as well that you are creating history then how yeah. do you go ahead and define this genre of movies some few, few years from now how will i find it is immaterial i don't think uh, um, i'm thinking about that you should tell me how you would find it you try answering that question for me please well what i would see or what i feel right now that's from your movies that i get because i'm a huge fan i feel that you find this uh, that this era is basically very much detached detached it is detached okay. to his feelings people are still trying to find out we are trying to break the chain it is about finding ourselves that is something a picture that i find but it is still on the verge of looking and not finding ha huh. right so that is something i so don't you so do you feel that by doing that we are actually going ahead and giving a perception of a confused generation perhaps yeah perhaps i'm so, no, i 
I don't. So, would you like to redefine it? So, what is Imtiaz Ali's perception on the genre of movie? That is what I After want. After making know. movies, I should really have nothing more to say. Okay. What I have to say is in the movies, really. Um, there is no subtitle that I can provide, okay. which is why I was asking you. I think you are trying to put it in a very nice way. It is not necessary for every thought, you know, to be um, to finish right now with a ring. It's not necessary. The thought is very interesting, but uh, just another thing. What exactly goes if you are, uh, you know, pointing out the thought factor? What thought exactly goes into naming your films? Oh Because my you God! Have a lovely, uh, you know, list of names. Like really? Jumpy Med, I, I think I, love I, it. I think all my titles suck. No, I, I, I think one disagree. a very big problem that I have is that I just don't know how to title my movies. I seem to be lucky with this one. I got a title like Tamasha, which is nice. Um, But they actually go ahead and give a reflection. They go ahead and create that curiosity and apprehension. It's just apprehension. it's I just good fortune. It's luck. <laughs> and it's the fact of the matter is that like jab we met which became a very popular title i really hated it when it was suggested to me by shahid kapoor at 2 am at night thank you so much i thought he's losing the plot <laughs> till he told me that his father has suggested Could it then i thought sir? what's happening i better take it seriously and it has become so popular now but i didn't really like it i still don't i still kind of tolerate it because pankaj ji suggested it but yeah the world loves the title i think yeah. um so i have always had a very tough time with naming my films yeah you see there were three there were three titles the one that i liked was uh, uh, punjab mail for the same film and uh, these three titles went and the poll happened and the, i think even before the poll people even around in and around the office etc were saying that love aajkal uh, sorry jab bhi met uh, is the best title and that's the one that won the poll as well i think we'll take take the last question shampa you you wanted to ask since Ex excuse me ma'am no uh, i i want to ask the last question yes ma'am no hi imtiaz uh, this is a question about jab bhi met yes ma'am i want to ask this and many of my friends and especially coming from you coming from me yes yeah. is it a part of your dbms days <laughs> is it uh, part of your dbms days the film the, jab bhi met yeah some uh, the names and some few parts yeah, yeah, of yeah, it yeah. there was a girl called geet dilan yes she was my classmate she was your classmate <laughs> yes okay so what's your, what's your name my name is archana arch did we meet each other in school yes we have but that was years back Yeah. Uh so I they all want to know this but nobody ever had a chance of you know, asking the, you. You know the very funny thing maybe this is not the forum to say this. No no no. Yeah, no, no please 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 say. <laughs> but um yeah so um actually I was friends with Rasna that is Geet's sister. Yes yeah, she was your classmate. She was a year senior to me but yeah. we used to do some plays together. She acted as my daughter in one play and some uh maybe my some other wife or something in some other play so rasna and i used to hang out and used to do plays and i was also very friendly with roop there were these three sisters uh, geet rasna and roop so uh, it is when i was writing the film jab bhi met when the girl comes into the story i wanted her to have a name when she introduces herself i wanted to, her to have a name and i thought geet could be a nice name geet it's unusual and this girl was sikhni you know so i thought geet dilan would be a nice name and that was all that there was to it and of course i knew geet dilan yeah uh, so it kind of just uh, formed like that and then later in the story i realized that there is also going to be a sister uh, for who roop's name was used yeah So uh, Roop was the youngest one. Roop was the youngest one. Yeah. So then that's how it happened. In fact, I didn't know Geet very well while okay. in school. Okay. Yes, you guys were senior to me yeah, yeah. by a few years. Yeah. Much later after the film uh, uh, had released and years had gone by, I get a message 
saying that, hi, this is Geet. And you know, usually what happens is that Karina, whenever she messages me, she writes Geet. Okay. Whatever, and then uh, she, instead of writing Karina, she writes Geet. So I thought that it could be her, but it didn't sound like, you know, it didn't read like uh, her. So then I realized that it could be this one. So I called her. She said, hi, this is Geet Dylan, and is it whatever, and then she, Yeah, because Geet was bombarded with a lot of questions, you exactly. know. Exactly. Ex I, I can imagine. So she says, you know, a lot of people ask me, and I'm married now, and my boys, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Because, yeah, and then she says, you know, did, while you were in school, uh, did you like, like me or anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that was the basic assumption, you know, because you took Geet's oh, name. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Man, no, it's not true. It's not true. Well, most of us who are from DBMS know it's not true, but uh, yeah. a lot of people did think that. Yeah, it's okay. Let them think. <laughs> but it's just not true. <laughs> Thank you and nice meeting you. <laughs> Likewise, ma'am. I think that that brings us uh, to the end of this session. Ideally, I would have liked it to be called Jab Me and Intiaz Met. But anyways, it was power of story. So I just want to say that you truly are a rock star. And we love you, Aj. And we love you <laughs> even more, Kal. And I won't do any more Tamasha. I'll request the editorial director of the New Indian Express, Mr. Prabhu Chavla, to please come on stage and present. Yeah? But before, we, before I go from here, I'd like to thank all of you for being a lovely, lovely uh, group of friends. It was very disarming. I felt uh, uh, very comfortable talking over here, and I wanted this session never to end, chiefly because of Diksha, because apart from the dusky beauty, <laughs> she's also a very, very uh, intelligent conversationalist. And I have disappointed her by not talking in Odia, uh, but uh, uh, very well done. You conducted it really nicely. Thanks a lot. <laughs>